Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order uh, at 4.03 uh, in City Council Chambers. Um, uh, I'd like to announce that this meeting is being both audio and video recorded. Um, and now we'll do introductions. My name is Jim Nash. I am the chair of the Transportation and Parking Commission. Next to me is... Gina Louise-Shara. I am the vice chair. Gary Hartwell, citizen member. Alan Verson, planning board. Dave Palmer, at Central Services. Jerry Casper, chief of police. Donald Lascali, director of the DPW. Maggie Chan, DPW. Devin Bruce, citizen. Adam Hobbit, citizen. Beth Keppel at DPW. Nancy Forrestal, assistant city collector. Thank you, everybody. Um, now for our brief promotion of the Pace Car program. That's this right here. Uh, it's a pledge uh, that you, you go online, you fill out the form at DPW. It's a pledge that you'll drive the speed limit. And the hope is that if we get enough people doing this, that we can actually lower speeding in Northampton. Um, so go online and do that. Um, is there anybody here for public comment? Yes. Step forward and give us your name and where in town you're from. Thank you. Uh, David Bergengren, 19 Wilder Place. And uh, <coughs> I got a few things about parking Wilder Place from last fall. So I suppose I should ask first, because I don't know, did you guys uh, come up with your striping policies for the city? That you were, uh, were going to do that first over the winter, and then and they do something for individual city, individual streets. Did you guys do that? So uh, in discussions with the director of DPW, uh, Donna Lasalia, <coughs> uh, the director's decision was to take streets on a case-by-case -case basis, okay. and that um, and that I recently forwarded a, a, a memo to the director to consider uh, Wilder was one of them, uh, along with I think it's a Grove up in Leeds, and um, so. That's the approach it's that we'll done by the DPW's discretion. The DPW has, to, has discretion over um, over line striping. Okay. We create we. Did, so go ahead. No, sorry. Did, did, so that's that's settled. That's part of the policy now. The DPW will, will do it on a street a street by street basis. Basically. Correct. I'm going to take this back to my. So you, why don't you make your case for the line striping there? The I director's will, here. I will and, do that. Yeah. And, yeah, yes. And okay, so we've gotten started. A few weeks ago, they put the no parking signs, I'm sure you know, on the west side of the street. So those are up. Now, so there's two different things. Uh, I got my notes when I saw I had a chance to go over them, but I remember two things and was reminded by neighbors of two things. One was we were going to, well, we originally pleaded for no, park, no public parking on the street. We kind of gave up on that. I don't think we're going to do that. The next request was, there, you're going to park only on the east side of the street for four houses there. We were hoping maybe you could limit it to one space per lot, on the four lots. But whether or not you can do that, we had an even stronger request. And I just was reminded of two things as I hurried to get here. Uh, with my new speed limit. <laughs> uh, I to, um, and that is that we have two houses, the first on the right and the third on the right, who have front walkways that, that come all the way to Wilder Place. The other two come off the driveways, so it's not an issue. But for the first house and the third house, I live on the third house, uh, it is an issue with people parking in front of our walkways that come straight up to the house. In the winter, it's hard to get in the house. And, it's, and, and other times it's very inconvenient. And right now, as usual, somebody's parked there, so it's all very hard for us to get our garbage picked up. It's, it's a bunch of them. So I'm hoping to consider not striping, you know, leaving out of the stripes those two entryways, just two of them. Um, if you, if you, whether or not you can limit it to one space per lot, either way. That's even more important, those two walkways. 
And the other thing I have is, is a related thing. That I thought you guys voted on last fall. I was here. Um, it's never been done. The elimination of the parking spot. I, and boy, did I get a reminder just now as I came here. The, the parking spot just to the right on Main Street as you come out of Wildwood Park. Just to the right. It's within about three or four feet of the, of the curb there, the, of the turn and the, the intersection. And it blocks all view. When, when there's a truck there, which it very often is, you can't see anything. So the people coming out of the parking lot across the street, turning into the, to your, the lane you're trying to go to, there are people coming out of Cooper's Corner, turning, this would happen today, it happens all the time, right? Turning into the same lane. You can't see what's coming to the right at all, because it's totally blocked. And there, I, I believe you have a, don't you have regulations supposedly that mm, not supposed to be a parking space within like 20 feet of a intersection, I think? So, sir, I'm pretty sure uh, no. council did you approve did eliminating that space, you and did. it was recommended by so. the, the TPC. That's right. That's and um, my guess is that uh, DPW is working on the long list yeah, of so things. That's my that request, though, that that they'll get to eliminate the space. Before something bad happens there someday, uh, because it could. You have to inch out, inch out, inch out, and hope for the best, basically. But yeah. the. No parking signs did go up this No week. parking signs? Okay. Signs so you, you, they did a good job. They put them where, except for one house and she didn't complain, so they put them where they're, they're the least conspicuous, which is nice. And actually, when the parking, when the striking is done, are there, are, are signs going to go up for that? Is there going to be any kind of hourly thing or is it just going to be open parking? You know? Is that discretion, discretionary or DPW? The parking in other words, wilder, on the park, there's on the, on the, on the east side. Is it going to involve signs or not? There's no time limit on. on yeah, okay, it's still no signs. Which is no fine. signs indicating that there's a yeah, time. Yeah, okay, just strike. That's okay. So what's indicated right, on your street is one side is most of the street is non-parking and the other parking oh, okay. is allowed and there's no signs. Yeah, you guys also voted, as I recall, no parking on the parking side of the street on the east. I think you also voted already 45 feet in from Main Street to the park. Okay. Uh, I, I recall that as a vote. Uh, so that's all. Any any time frame possible. I'm going to take this back to my neighborhood. So. Any idea when this is going to happen? What in particular? Uh, it, the striking. And the, and the elimination of that parking place on Main Street. So the elimination of the, 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 the striping um, may or may not be done. Um, and um, that I can follow up on that for you, mm -hmm. and uh, and that with the um, the elimination of the parking space, mm -hmm. I imagine that's on the list of things to get done by DPW. So they were out there posting the putting the signs up. I imagine that space will be we'll eliminated pretty soon. Uh, and the other, you, you say striping may or may not be done. I thought you, I thought you kind of no, it's up to DPW. But I assume there'll be some striping. But I, I, I'll, I'll discuss it with the director, and okay. I will get back to you. All right, that'd be great. That's thank it. you for coming. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Is there anybody else from the public who'd like to speak? Okay. Uh, next thing on the agenda: approval of the minutes from the previous meeting, April twenty third, twenty nineteen. Would somebody like to make a motion to? So moved. And the second. Okay. okay, moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion on the minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 In, hmm? One abstain. Any no's? Okay, so one no, no abstentions. The rest are all positives. All right. One abstention and no no's. And the rest. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> um, reports from departments and subcommittees. Uh, do we have any reports? Anybody would like to provide? Chief? No reports. Director? Yes, I have an update on paving. Uh, so we have uh, multiple paving projects going on around the city right now. Birch Pit Road between Clement Street and Forest Glen Drive, the first layer of pavement has been installed and final paving is scheduled for the first week in July. 
We're also continuing work on Glendale Road and Bridge Road, and we're working on drainage improvements right now, and as well as structure work on both streets. And then Chesterfield Road, Spring Street, Cross Street, and Main Street in Leeds has been awarded to Palmer Paving, and the value of this is about $2.1 million. Um, the project has started with um, the installation of tree protection and just kind of preliminary roadway signs, um, and that'll gear up as the summer continues. Um, we'll also be making some deck repairs to the Clement Street Bridge later in the summer. We will communicate out a schedule for that work once one becomes available. Uh, as a result of conversation at TPC over the past several months, um, we have done a couple of things to look at some problem intersections throughout the city. So what we did was put together a request for proposals to study several intersections that have been topics of conversation here. So Pine Street, Maple Street, and Man Terrace, West Hampton Road and Glendale Road and West Farms, where those come together, as well as multiple intersections along the State Street corridor. So the purpose of the study is going to be to gather and analyze traffic data and recommend countermeasures that will improve safety and transportation con conditions. Um, so the the value of this work is close to $40,000, and what we are looking for from our consultant are some high-impact, low-cost measures that we can take at all of these intersections based on an engineering analysis and accident data analysis and traffic counts to help us to make decisions about what we can do to make these intersections safer. So we anticipate that this will be a multi-month process to gather the data and potentially come up with some alternatives for us to eventually have a conversation around constructing. So these are kind of long-standing conversations that have gone on within this commission and uh, there is movement on this. Um, one more update, the Agent 19 Roundabout Project has begun, as I'm sure folks have noticed, uh, that this work is scheduled to be completed by June 2021. This is not a city project, although it is in cooperation with the city. If there are any questions that you receive, they can be referred to the Mount District. That's all. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Um, is there any plans or agenda for getting paint on the streets? There, there are many, there's so many areas in the city where it's hard to tell which lane you're in or at intersections, some of which seem dangerous. Is there any plans for that? We have a line striping contract that was recently signed, so we'll be striping all around the city this summer. And that's an annual thing, too. It is, yes. Annual maintenance. They always wear. So just a couple quick updates. So we talked about some construction projects my office overseeing. We hired Precise Paid to repair some of the roof damage and the bike path through downtown. And to pay about 1,000 feet of the bike path and leaves for its truck on gravel. The project's about 80% done. It should be done in the next two or three weeks. It's basically the leaves is the thing that's left to be done. Um, and we started a contract with ETNL to uh, build a nine tenths of mile bike path from Bird Spit Road to Overlook Drive to Sandy Hill. Uh, and that uh, we do pre construction next week, and that work will begin on about July 1st. So, those, those you should see this here. Um, we all we talked about this to the committee two or three years ago. We used traffic mitigation money to look at the intersection of Leonard and Haydenville Road. Um, we, do, and we did a public meeting early in the process. We're doing another public walkthrough on June 29th. You all welcome us primarily to the Leeds neighborhood just to make sure that people still like the project now the way they did five years ago whenever they got a lot of conversation. Um, and then, like I mentioned, that the, the mayor put aside $100,000 to redesign um, streetscape improvements in Florence Center. $100,000 doesn't go very far. So we're doing a community meeting on June 24th in Florence to get input on what are things that are that there's the biggest consensus now. What people want may or may not make sense from an engineering standpoint, but it's it's the first step in the process. Um, and then I, we just got a notice of the grant today is a tiny grant, ten thousand dollars, which really doesn't go very far for you know 
lighter, quicker, cheaper solutions. So looking at sort of talking about ERISA projects, and that's as yet to be defined. It's primarily about, you know, this is from AARP, it's about how to make the streets more friendly for elderly, but since the media age and early age, it's basically elderly, it's how to make the streets more friendly for everybody. And so committing from, I mean, the sort of things are eligible are from the kind of chalk fest that the Arts Council does, you know, in some new neighborhood to draw attention, or arts installations, or temporary road diets, none of those things are eligible. So that will be a later conversation, how we actually start. Um, and then finally, Donna mentioned the, the roundabout. Just so you know, we, we've been really successful at getting state and federal funding for projects, but it also means we're going to have a miserable construction season, two construction seasons. So the King Street project that DBW is working on is about to be advertised, or will be advertised in the next six months. The roundabout at um, North Hatfield and the food co-op is supposed to be advertised by the end of June. I'm, I'm sorry, by the end of uh, September. Um, Damon Road is moving forward. So we're going to, next year, 2020 and 2021, we're potentially going to have you know, three or four projects all at the same time. There's also some interstate projects going on that we don't deal with in terms of traffic. It's sort of good to get out of with, but go way back. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, Jim? Yeah. Uh, Wayne reports on the planning projects, but Wayne also chairs the subcommittee to this committee that is bicycle and pedestrian. Um, they met on May 1st, that's, uh, I don't know that I need to bring you much about what was in that meeting. Um, there were seven of the nine subcommittee people there. Um, we meet again tomorrow morning at 7.30 in the morning. Um, in Wayne's office there are nine people that do that. Um, some of it starts with Wayne's sort of status of the projects that might be relevant to, the, to for instance, the, the construction work on the bicycle path. But, um, I'm going to take it on as a project just to bring to you anything that might come from that committee that this, uh, that subcommittee that this committee should know about. I just think it runs kind of independent of this group and um, I just will take it on and do a little reporting back to you. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. I think we're done with announcements. Um, so I'm going to, as always, switch up the order a little bit here. Um, I'd like to start uh, with um, item B, which is an update on passenger rail. Uh, Terry Masterson's here to give us a, uh, an overview of what's going to be happening. Oh, I, I announced you like this. <laughs> device a couple of years ago. It was like a little piece of black plastic and if you pushed it, it just made this hugely authentic train sound. Yeah. That wasn't authentic? Oh, it was. Oh, it was. I said it was. Yeah. I'm happy to uh, give you a little briefing on where we are with the north-south rail um, and then some other rail issues overall. Um, the North-South Rail is going to have a new name called the Connecticut River Line, and eventually, well, eventually hopefully, they'll be able to allow that, so they'll have an identity for people to be aware of. Um, the North-South service start date is still unknown. Um, it had been promised by Governor Baker last summer at Union Station that it would be in June, but now um, it's undetermined and we still wait to hear from MDOT when, when it will start. Um, the frequency will be two trains in the morning and two trains in the evening. So we're hearing sometime like a 6 o'clock or an 8 o'clock train and then coming back Vermonter will come up here around 4 o'clock, so there might be at 6 p.m. and then a far later one at 9, 30, 10 o'clock, or 10, 30 to leave New York City you know, earlier, early evening, if you will. Um, there will also be one or two extra trains on the weekends heading south, um, but 
but those specifics too will need to be um, identified publicly. There had been talk when the planning process began that the ticket prices would be fixed, similar to the Hartford line where it's $8 to $10 to go from Springfield or Windsor Locks to New Haven. Um, now, the message is that the pricing will be peak or off peak, um, and the state um, DOTs expressed little interest in subsidizing the ticket prices, which helps you achieve a fixed fare. Um, so, that is also uh, the status of that issue. The length of service um, had been discussed last summer, summer before last at, this, at, a, at a hearing that it would be a four-year pilot, and now it's down to two. Um, the state has um, indicated that that's what it will be, and that is not what Mayor Markowitz nor, nor Tim Brennan had asked for or Linda Dunlady um, two summers ago when this was being planned. Uh, it was agreed that the pilot had to be longer term, to create a presence and an established tenure in the, in the region for it to be um, used. Also, ridership had been it had been discussed that ridership uh, the ridership expectation would be reasonable and reflected the fact that the Vermonter ridership so far exceeded um, the planning predictions of um, the Knowledge Corridor study of 2008. Um, but I've been told that the ridership demands now have been elevated um, to want to see a doubling of the existing ridership. Um, that is really, I think, um, not a possibility. The idea that you're going to have 50,000 people riding the train um, is not realistic. Um, marketing money. Um, their state has set aside no money to market the North-South Rail Plan, um, and Senator Comerford has been able to achieve a $250,000 appropriation from the Senate side of the budget. But it remains to be seen whether that will pass the conference or whether Governor Baker will take it away from the budget. Um, all of these points have a consistent denominator um, and I don't have to say it myself, I can quote Senator Lesser, who appeared before uh, the chamber six weeks ago uh, at 33 Wallace Street, and, and in so many words inferred that this is not really a successful oriented um, situation, that this is just a consistent effort to resist, delay, decline, decrease, deny, um, expansion of rail passenger service. And it comes <clears throat> on a landscape in which Palmer is trying to have rail go to Boston, and Pittsfield is trying to explore rail connections to New York City. And it's all, and, and in there, the Pittsfield example, which, which is also very interesting, is that the rail will be one train on a Friday leaving Penn Station to go up to Pittsfield. Um, it will be a $75 fare. It will be Friday at 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, and it will only run for eight months of the year. Um, so you can decide, you know, how, how you get a positive, you know, out of, out of that. Um, so that's where the North-South Rail stands. Um, the good news is that the platform work is underway. The platform's being extended, and that should be finished. Um, very soon. Um, we, about a month ago, released the Vermonter ridership numbers for the third year in a row, um, and we continue to see annual increases. Um, Northampton, Greenfield, and Holyoke comprise well over a third of all the riders on the Vermonter, um, which continues to be a very impressive statistic. Um, and there are 30,000 riders out of about 90,000 in that figure. Um, so we know that people want to use the train and um, are willing to, to um, pay for it as well. Um, the Hartford line ridership figures have come out too, um, and 
Hartford line, although it's, I will say up front, that's, I don't mean to compare anything in Hartford line to suggest that what happens there is going to happen here. We're two different regions, we're two different population bases. We don't have New Haven and Hartford in our region. But however, um, 2,000 people a day use this rail service that only started a year ago. So that's a pretty impressive number. And 11,000, about 11,000 people a month will use the Hartford line out of the Springfield station, um, which is also very impressive. Um, the state is in the middle, middle of the process of doing a comprehensive rail plan. And if anyone has um, any interest, they should go to the state DOT website where you can post comments and questions or tell them about things you want to see more of. And it doesn't hurt um, to have those comments there. Um, and my final um, suggestion is that for people who want to use the train, um, I often promote the use of the Windsor Lock Station because it's right off 91, so the exit 42. It's right underneath the overpass, um, and it's free parking. Um, and you can get, you can get in the morning. You can take the two trains earliest in the morning. They, you can sit in that train, and that train will go all the way down to Newport News. So those two trains are literally going to go right down the East Coast. And service between the Hartford Line and the Amtrak is almost hourly. So that's another, instead of going to Springfield Station and dealing with the garage and all those issues. Um, and at the Springfield Station, they're working on the raised platform, which is highly important um, in terms of timeliness to have a train come in and get people on and off and then take off. The train has to open up the doors and let everybody climb down the stairs. That elongates the on and off. And if you multiply that by a couple of stops, it adds up. So that's also one. But a lot of these projects are, frankly, years behind. It should have been done a long time ago, but the good news is to get it done. And hopefully, we'll see some rail service soon and we'll see how it turns out. If there's any questions, I'm happy to Well, is, is recently there was some sort of agreement around parking for the, the station, is that correct, or between the city? That's a, that's a parking question. I'm, I'm not, or I'm not close to that arrangement. Um, I will say that for the 19,000 people a year that come on and off the Vermonter, the demand for parking so far has surprisingly been very minimal. Um, as Nancy, Nancy knows and Dave Walmart has been very nice, he lets me know how many people a month call for parking, and it's, <laughs> it's three, four, or five people a month. So it's not like they're beating down the doors. And if you ever go and watch a train come in, it's pretty funny because Everybody gets off the train and they all just sort of like dissipate. They just, you know, they just go in different directions. Not that there aren't cars or friends to pick people up, but you know, a few people go this way, a few go up the bike trail, a few, and you sort of sit there. Who needs a car? I thought we would be berated. You know, where can I park my car? But it seems to have worked out. So, um, yeah. just like to clarify a couple of points is so for the ex there's expanded rail service coming, right? And the trial period for the expanded rail service was half from four years yeah. to two years. And the expectation uh, for the expanded rail service was increased. The ridership. The ridership. So 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 the so the rules have changed in for the expanded rail service in, in this way, if I understand it correctly. We're supposed to get or not we, but the rail service is supposed to get a greatly expanded number of riders. Is it double the number of riders? Okay. So we're supposed to increase the ridership by twice what was originally the original expectation in half the amount of time. Right? So if you were to graph that, the graph would be four times as steep. It's a it's a as far as like the math goes, the math becomes way more difficult, right? And then to to further complicate this, um, there's there's zero money to advertise the rail service to achieve the uh, greatly intensified goal. So that seems. That seems like a like a synopsis that is not a synopsis that I would I would like to have clarified in that manner. 
you know, fell apart there at the end. But, um, but yeah, wow, that's really something. Uh, and is there a, is there a, um, so if the goals are, are not met, is there a, um, is there something that happens if the goals are not met? Like, is there, like, so it's okay to have goals, but you say like, oh, we want 10,000 riders, and if you get 10,000 riders, then X or Y happens, right? So what happens if we don't meet these newly intensified goals? Two, two state transit officials basically said they'll close the service down. Okay, wow, okay. I mean, so, the, 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 also, I should also say, I forgot to mention that, the cost under Governor Patrick and Congress went over to re-upgrade the entire Pioneer Valley line, put all new switches, all new traffic lights, new tracks, new crossings. It was $70 million. It was $45 million from the American Relief and Recovery Act. Yeah, yeah. It was 30 to 35 from the state. So all that's done. The current cost of just running the two trains up and down in the, right, in the right. morning and the evening is $1 million a year. And we have, this is what we're... So there's two, over, over there's two numbers dollar a year that you said it was $70 million and $45 million, right? Those two numbers combined come out to something like $115 million. Is that right? No, within the 70 is 40 from the okay. Obama administration and 30 to 35. Okay, so the state. total number is 75. Yes. Right. Those funds were spent through 2009 through 2014, 2015. So the, so the annual cost of operating the rail line is like a little over 1% of the money invested. Yeah. I mean, it, okay. it, Mayor Narkowitz has said at hearings we've gone to where we've already built the track and we now run some trains right, on right. the track. Right, yeah, right. It's, it's the most exactly, you know, exactly. eloquent thing to say. So you know, we've spent the big bucks. Now let's, you know. It seems, a, it seems a real shame to put that kind of money on the table and then and then effectively not capitalize on your investment. So I I just didn't want to get this my I didn't want this to be lost in the sea of the, the sort of continuum I just wanted to point that it's, out. It's interesting to note that, that in the last three days the Boston Globe has really sharpened their awareness of the lack of funding and investment in infrastructure. I think the red line derailments have really gotten the globe to now start to say where are we with you know how we, well, I hope we're not competing I mean because we were just in Boston and I hope I mean I hope that the red line is not like the bot that the T doesn't wind up being the big dig so at any rate thank you for right. the clarifying that any other questions okay. thank you Terry thank you and keep us surprised of when the train is actually going to show up. Yep. All right, we can start our own marketing campaign tomorrow. That's right. Well, <laughs> this is it right here. That's where you're working. Pretty much. <laughs> and for pace car, too. Um, now we have updates from the PVTA. Paul. Thank you. Thank you for accommodating my schedule. We'll move me up a little bit. So um, the, the primary reason we're here tonight is to discuss the R44, which we had done a, a one public hearing here, one hearing. We had about 30 participants. Um, the overall uh, feedback from the, those 30 participants was about 15 in general support of the change, which is basically we want to create a loop as opposed to the horseshoe pattern right now and provide continuous service around that loop. It will increase service time about 10 minutes, but we think it provides more effective service for the residents in the area. And overall, about 15 uh, people supported it. They came out of the hearing. 10% uh, were somewhat opposed, but not significantly opposed. And there were four who were kind of ambivalent. They could go with either option. Um, our general feeling is that this is a service uh, change that we should implement. We believe it will improve service for the folks that use it, and we'll just make it easier for those folks to access the community, especially the folks on the, on the end of it that were simply missing access to the bus. Um, so I think at this point, we would like some kind of sense of the committee as to how you would like us to move forward. Our general impression is that we should move ahead with this change and implement it. We can always go back to the current system should, you know, should we find it's ineffective or create significant barriers for the folks who are using it. But we think on balance it's going to improve service and enhance the, the uh, service for those folks that are using it now. So I'm just kind of looking for a sense from you before we go ahead and implement the change. And 
I know uh, it wasn't on the agenda, so you can't take a formal vote, um, but it, it's just kind of a sense of the committee. So this will open up service to um, a group that has no access to transportation? Uh, sure, the walking, you know, through the bus stops. But right, it will open up, it'll provide direct service into that area of uh, Northampton and provide direct service into their neighborhoods and near their homes. And this was a request um, partly because there's some refugee families that have mm -hmm. moved to that area that, who that don't have area. access Just that. folks that don't have access who want some access into the area. And in general, the neighborhood seems to support it. You know, it, it does come with trade-offs. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, you might so, okay. If you were to do some sort of trial basis, uh, not unlike the train discussion we just had, mm -hmm. what do you think you'd be looking at, Paul, as far as duration? I think we're looking at, I mean, like, if I remember, we're looking at about a year to, to mm -hmm. test it, correct? Oh, six months to a year. Six months to a year. So, and it's really going to depend upon the type of feedback. I mean, if it proves immediately to be a real problem, I think we would we'd be able to switch it back. But typically, it does take some time to build ridership. Um, there is going to be some trade-off in terms of a longer service time, a longer route time, uh, but at the same time, it does seem that there's a great need that's not filled, and we want to try to address that. There, there's no easy solution. You know, there isn't enough money to just short, you know, add a second bus and, and make it so that we can solve both problems. So we're we're kind of caught between having to try to address the issue and find a solution that serve that addresses both issues, but doesn't impact anybody negatively too significantly. I'm all for it. Anyone else? <laughs> I'm just looking to get a sense of the, the committee. I and mean, I don't want to go do something that you're vehemently opposed to. At the same point in time, you know, I, I do think this is some, uh, something we should move forward on. And I guess in the absence of a huge no, I, I would go back and recommend to my folks that we move forward with it and, and see how it plays out. The councils are going to hear when there's a problem. So they're, mm -hmm. going to, they're going to hear from a small constituency trying to solve an immediate problem. How are you going to, is it just ridership numbers? Is it how many people sit on a, on a bus seat? There are ridership numbers. We do conduct rider surveys as well. And I would imagine we'll survey this group a little bit more focus over the next would, six Would months. there be more than just the raw numbers of ridership that would give you a clue as to whether it was working? Yes, there will be. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I expect they might come here too and let us know. So, and, and typically, if so, when things start to go south, we get phone calls. Okay. Yeah. We don't typically hear when they go well. But we, you know, we will have a pretty good sense of it very quickly. If there are people who are truly uh, inconvenienced or feel that they've been significantly inconvenienced, we'll get a phone call very quickly. So. So, all right. I think then you know, at this point, I'll recommend that we move forward with it, and then we'll monitor it for six months, and then go from there. And then I notice you have the uh, the Bridge Street stop on the agenda as well. Yeah, I'm, and it's it's convenient that you folks are here. Um, so why don't we move on to that? The, um, I think I'm this is that item one. D oh, on you, you, our you agenda. I'm going to hand this one off to Jamin for the Bridge Street stop, simply because Jamin's been more involved with the discussion on the stop and more familiar with it than I am. I've only been here three months, so it's not quite as fresh to me. But. Hello, Jamie. Hello, everyone. So, um, I, you know, I, so this request started, I think, with me, mm -hmm. and then with you guys and the, with the PBTA then coming to us, and, um, and DPW has now produced this draft ordinance, and um, so, does DPW want to talk about the ordinance and then we can talk about the stop? Yeah, so the, the brief history here is that there is a current inbound stop, uh, which I'll uh, put stop in sort of quotation marks, um, up by uh, the Bridge Street Cemetery and also very close to the school there. Um, and there are sort of historical issues around parking that I think all of us are aware of there and having a bus stop in the middle of that is uh, less than desirable and additionally the bus stop that's there um, according to our ordinance actually isn't even a bus stop which is why bus stop is in quotes. So, um, 
after we had had conversations here and then these folks were good enough to uh, make the ride to see me uh, at the BW office. Um, and we talked about what our options might be and an inbound stop across from the outbound stop by the post office seemed to be a very good solution to um, this, this kind of long-standing problem and also we can speak to this a little better sort of increasing accessibility for folks um, but from DPW's standpoint we have reviewed the proposed location for conflicts with traffic that is turning and or entering and exiting and we feel that this is a reasonable location that is suitable in length, the road is suitable in width, the sight lines are sufficient, and we have no engineering problem with the location of the proposed bus stop. So we have drafted an ordinance to actually make this a, an official bus stop for the city's purposes and for PBTA's purposes. Well said. Jamie. Uh, much like she said. Right? Uh, what she said. Uh, much like Pinocchio, I feel like a real point now with the real bus stop. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we do currently have the existing Bridge Street School stop. Or stop, if I can put it in quotes. Um, and we have a few riders who get on and off at that location, but I think closer to the center of town, over by the post office, would be a much more desirable location for our riders, for the majority of them. Uh, we do receive frequent requests from passengers to stop exactly that location, but we tell them, sorry, we can't right now because that's not a stop. And I think this will go a long way towards helping address that concern. Wow, I love that the Mesa has two problems. It's very rare, very exciting. Very much so. I think you'll actually see that more activity because historically Hampton is increasing its programming and that's a little bit closer to some of the birds. And I think that uh, people going to our new, to our additional train service will want to get off there rather than at the courthouse and walk back to the, the train station. So, does somebody want to make a motion to send this with a positive recommendation to the City Council? Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 And aye. And uh, any no's? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, so that's going to go forward to City Council, and I want to thank the PBTA for working with us, and um, I, I love the reports. This is really great. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We got you out early. Thank you. All right. It's out. All right, our last meeting was the record. I think the minutes said we got out at 4.32, but... Um, Hoping we'll be out of here by five. All right. Um, let's see. Where did my agenda go? Yes, we're back to A. Okay. The um, so we have a package of, of parking changes that largely have to do uh, in and around Smith College. Um, they. These, um, they have, a, largely it's adding metered parking um, at a number of locations that currently is just um, on-street parking. And um, is there somebody, Nancy, do you feel like you could speak to some of this? Or, or you know what, I think the best way to frame it is there's, there's, there's a group of city administrators who get together every, what, monthly, monthly. And, uh, and review parking-related issues. And that, that group came up with this particular package of uh, recommendations. Um, these recommendations are outside of the, the, the parking study that was done a number of years ago. That the, typically the packages that have been coming forward have been the slow rollout of those recommendations. 
These here are actually have to do with um, discussions from your group, and that um, and these are recommendations based on you know these are things that that group thought would best address things. Um, so I think we want to handle these in a slightly different manner than the other packages that have come forward where we just kind of look at them and say, oh, these look pretty good. Um, because we're adding metered spaces in and around Smith uh, College, um, and I think that we want to take things a little bit slower and do a little bit of outreach. I discussed this with Lynn today um, to make sure we have that latitude. That, um, that basically that the, the group has uh, developed these recommendations and they've, they're asking the TPC to help do some of the, the community outreach. Um, in, um, in the meantime, I've also forwarded this package to Councillor Bidwell. Um, uh, all of these are in his ward and, um, and his request upon seeing them is please slow this down um, so we can talk about this. Um, he's uh, you know, he wants to be able to meet with uh, representatives at Smith, as well as um, there's a there's a number of um, constituencies here that we want to be sensitive to. One is the, the the students and the administrators at Smith, but there's also and too bad the PVTA folks left that there's there's a portion of these uh, that involves Elm Street, which is where a lot of commuters that are using the, uh, um, the, the PVTA to get to um, uh, UMass and Amherst and Hadley. People will park on Elm Street and we're proposing to take some of those spaces and make the, them metered spaces as well. So that's the overview. And um, so I... Can we just go back a little bit sure. earlier with overview? Just you know, it's where it started. So, if you know more, please. Well, this goes back 20 years ago, I guess. I date myself, but so when we first did the park and ride lot at Sheldon Field, the idea was we wanted to catch those people coming from the hill towns or Northampton, give them a place to park for free and not create congestion. So we created a park and ride lot. The first year, we had almost nobody use it. We then put meters on Elm on the lower part, part of Elm Street that had, had meters now. And literally the day they went in, the park and ride lot started being heavily used. It's been heavily used ever since. So it seems like there's an opportunity for those people who take. I don't know what percentage of people parking are taking the bus, but a lot are, and clearly the park and ride lot is better from our standpoint. It still has capacity. Then the second thing I still date myself, this is a decade ago, 12 years ago, whenever it was. When Smith College built Ford Hall, they had to do a lot of traffic mitigation. One of the traffic mitigations they did is they used to charge $20 for parking pass for both staff and staff partners. They increased the rate, I think it went to $120. They no longer gave free passes to staff partners. And it was a great success, and they actually paid people not to park on campus. It was a great success, except then Elm Street went the other direction all those, the, the fairly high occupant, uh, high vacancy rates on Elm Street disappeared. People gave up their parking pass and parked on Elm Street. So at least my part of the city committee as well is those two things why right. we should expand further. Again, I'm not opposed to going slow because there are other people will be affected as well. I'm curious what those are, but I will say I have less sympathy to the Smith College community because there's lots of parking on campus. They're just trying to not pay for the parking on campus. Mm -hmm. so if it's neighborhood people, I'll let more sense So you're on the group. Nancy's part of it. Who else? I am. Maggie? Maggie. Oh. Okay. And um, did I, for, is there anything more the group wants to add in terms of? It's also correcting what's already in the field, making some corrections, you know, where signage is, some of this is outdated. Um, yeah, I noticed there was a curb cut where you could literally, it was legal to park in front of the driveway entrance. Okay. If, if, I'm, if I'm correct, there, 
on West Street, it's simply adding six additional meters, and it's already a meter, a generally a, a metered area. It's simply adding meters to it. Which one is West Street? Am I correct on that one? West Street is parking prohibited at all times. But weren't we adding? Right there were already spaces there. They're not needed. Needed. Right. But parking. There's parking is allowed. Yeah. Right. On a we were simply putting meters in those spaces. Correct. Right. Right. And I think it would be delineating spaces for those issues as well. Like Arnold Street already has painted spaces, and then you just be adding meters. So why don't we dis why don't we discuss the way I you know I, I, there there's four different proposals here and the, the in discussions with Lynn the West Street one is probably the most obvious so why don't we start with that and um, yes can I get in a general comment before we do? And I don't want sure. to sound too parochial about this, but I didn't know that there were four people on TPC that were also working on a city parking group, and I'm not at all opposed to what they're doing. I'm just surpri surprised might be the right word. It's like I didn't know, and I, I don't know that there's been any coordination between, you know, they're, they're developing proposals and they're coming to us, so I don't know that I should feel bad about that. And I probably should thank them. But it just, the letter caught me off guard. That's that's all I can say is I was like, really? And and, and like I said, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to feel about it. And it's great work, you know, to be thinking about it. But, I, and like I said, I started by saying I don't want to sound parochial, but I just, the lack of coordination or, or the independence of doing these things bilateral caught me on guard. That's it. So, having said that, I'm welcome to get into them, but I just, I think that needs to be said. I, I'm not that much in the know. Wayne's been here 20 years and has a history, and Maggie's on the, you know, I mean, I'm, it seems like people who are involved in doing the work know about the committee, or the, the regular meeting of the ad hoc committee. That's maybe how I should say that. Um, thanks. Thank you. Um, so I propose that we look at the West Street one first, and, um, but if people have other ideas on how to approach this. I mean, so in my mind, we could look at the West Street uh, proposal today. Uh, as far as the on-campus, uh, well, the, the Arnold and the Belmont, I think we need to wait till, I mean, it's the summer right now and that we might want to wait until students are back, administrators are back, um, to then consider moving that one forward and so we can do some of the outreach. And that was uh, uh, Councillor Bidwell's request. Um, and then, um, and I think we need to be similarly thoughtful with the, uh, with the Elm Street. Um, well, I remember some years ago when we were talking about putting in the new Health services building. I you know, we had a lengthy discussion here about Smith's accounting of all of I mean, they keep a running accounting of on campus parking and if they add parking or want to take away parking they have to generate something. I mean, there was a pretty robust inventory of parking that the that the college was keeping. Is that up is that available to this group to think about? a spreadsheet we get so you so it shows a spreadsheet it doesn't show public parking next to it it's just the internal campus piece okay so this was this come back to when the planning board approved the parking garage in fort hall you gave a reduction in parking and so that's what began the process they had to track we need to know what what are they creating what are they taking away so they meet the overall campus requirements. so those are your your be direct, and you're correcting me to say uh, my memory of that is that that was campus only parking, not public. Parking. Correct. Thank right. you. So we're happy to share it, but yeah, it's not. Okay. Thank you. West Street. Yes. 
I have one more question for the group. Was Smith's input sought in making these recommendations? I, I'm just trying to think if we need to take that added step. So not for this current round. Okay. All right. So we. All right. So. Um, all right. So let's take a look at West. So West Street is Route 66. Correct. And the in my discussions with Lynn today and people from the group can chime in. Um, so presently, you can see on the westerly side of the street, there's on-street parking. It's not meter. And the part of the reason for this recommendation is that just further south, and correct me if I'm wrong, that there's a parking garage, correct? Yeah, on the other on the other side. It's further north. It's further it's north. Yeah. Further down. It's like no, a crosswalk. From... It's, it's, and you crosswalk at the top of the page. The parking garage is right there. In fact, the shadow that's almost touching the crosswalk is the parking garage. Got it. So the idea is here is to make these metered spaces because it's consistent with what's going on on West Street on either side of that intersection, just north of that intersection with uh, Arnold. Those are all metered spaces. And the idea is to make these metered as well to also encourage people to use the garage. I believe that's the idea, correct? No? Well, it could be that. <laughs> I mean, if... if Smith is effectively charging their staff to um, park now, right? And we're providing a, I'll call it a non-market parking opportunity. It's sort of an attempt to mitigate uh, Smith's impact on the, on the city of this very large entity that demands parking, Smith is trying to corral it, and by providing non-market opportunities to park, sort of softens that, right? So I would, I would generally, you know, I mean, I would favor this because, um, because it sort of, it sort of matches what else is going on there, right? You have a paid parking garage. Yeah, this one-way parking right outside of it, it sort of extends that. Right. I think the picture says that all you've got parking is a nice little charge for parking. Yeah, and the other thing is that's like, that's sort of like, in the situation that it is now, there's no sign that says there was parking here, right? right? It's basically, it's like, it just basically says you can't not park here. So by striping it and putting meters in, you're identifying it as parking in what is otherwise an ambiguous situation. It is, the, it is in fact consent, which colleges are very capable. And there are meters just on that block. And there are meters just to the north of it, like in front of the North Star, and, right. or whatever it's called. Oh, and the long time. It's a long time ago. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you kicked it. I move a positive recommendation. Yes. Can we there yet? That's a second. Yes. Yeah. 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 first second. Um, we probably should have started with the motion, right? So then we can have the discussion. Well, it's a record now. Yeah, that's all right. All right, and um, so, uh, any more discussion on this? Okay, all in favor of sending this forward to council with a positive recommendation, say aye. 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 Any abstentions? I'm going to abstain. Here he's going to abstain. And any no's? Okay. All right, I think that was the easier. Yeah. Follow-up question, Counselor. Um, if 
we're going to sort of be on hiatus with the uh, the Elm and the Arnold pieces of this through the summer, possibly because the college is out. Um, would it be beneficial to have Councillor Bidwell come and visit us at the next meeting and just sort of discuss any of his concerns or what he would like to see happen, so we can sort of dovetail that into what we do later in the summer, early fall? Sounds like a good idea. Okay. I, I will invite him. So you're saying we should have a July meeting? <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> just the next meeting. That's the next meeting. <laughs> Okay. Um, so we can count or no? So how do we want to handle these these next ones? I we have no. I mean, the usual way is we vote up or down on whether to move them forward. We could also, uh, you know, decide to hold off until we get more information before we move on these. Is that kind of on the science side there? Which one? The last. Right. Right. Belmont runs off of Green Street. Off of Green Street. You know, you take that left yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. So to the other side is like theater and stuff like that. For On the, the right hand side, yeah, I want you to yeah, take that right, off the back, the side of the back. I guess my side I don't really sleep if we put this off, it's fine, but I think we got a pretty this isn't about revenue for me, we got a pretty clear goal of trying to Test station demand management, trying to encourage people to buy sort of buses and not drive. So from that standpoint, all this whole package makes sense to me. It's consistent with what we've been doing for a long time. I'll agree with Wayne on this. I think that, um, I mean, yeah, I think I think in general, especially with the, my, my other concern is that if we wait for Smith to come back, that, that opens a discussion with Smith, and that it, it could just, I mean, the, the timeline becomes very drawn out. So, and I, I think it's, you know, they're trying to get, they're trying to sort of bring parking in, you know, they're trying to create parking for um, the staff, and, uh, and I think that, you know, basically, and I'm also in favor of sort of defining those spaces, like having them be having them be proper spaces and not sort of like just parking by an absence of no parking. It it makes sense if you have like that you make you know, if you have a street that's out and leads someplace and there's no signage and there's no parking spaces and there's no meters, that totally makes sense, right? Because it's a low demand area. But in a situation like this, where it's extremely high demand, you have an extremely high population all around it, that to me it makes sense that you strike and meter that and you create a situation where that that's a defined market opportunity that matches the opportunity, the other opportunities that are around it. So I'm, you know, I, I'm okay either way. I just want to be perfectly clear about that. Like we can put this off and have discussions with Smith, but I think that this is. This to me, on the face of it, fits in with what's going on around it, and with what the larger goals of the city are. So, is there any concern that residents are parking along there, or do we think it's just staff or students who park in that spot, those spaces along? I, I, because of its location, yes. There is residential parking. Mm -hmm. However, as meter parking ends at 6 p.m., your residents will still be able to park there and not have to pay to park. Um, but and also because of its location, as you said, it's a very high demand area mm -hmm. because it's right, almost in the middle of the campus. Mm -hmm. So right now, is it, is it just open-ended parking? Like, I could go park my car there and be there in five days? 
and I'll say that from my experience from working at Forbes Library was um, Forbes Library added leaders in an attempt to curb students that were bringing cars to Smith from effectively just using it as long-term parking. And you could have built 500 acres of parking at Forbes Library, and people would just, students would just park it up. So this, this to me, you know, it, it also, the turnover um, that metered parking provides allows for people to come in and not have to go into the garage or not have to, right, because it, oh, because it opens up spaces, turn, the, having a time that opens up spaces. So, I, right, so if somebody needs to come in there and get business done, that having turnover there allows that to happen. So, again, just our, our, our experience at the Forbes Library when I was there, when I was there with the meters in. Um, not really a good thing. Thank you. you make a motion? Can I ask a question for Sure. What's the this little, there's a little, like, looks like one space that's limited time parking, and the rest of it's... The mystery. Yeah, there's, the there's like a middle spot. <laughs> it's a special yeah. spot, and everything else is not there as used middle. A, there used to be a house there. There's a driveway. Uh, uh, okay. Where, you mean across the street, or yeah. where the lot where is? The, where the new parking lot is. There was a, uh, a building there. So, it used why would it be limited time parking right there? I know there was a truck right there. Okay. All right. Anyway, so I guess we're not going to solve that mystery. This is an historic curb. All right, I'll, I'll make a motion to strike and meter that. If that's. The remainder of the suggestion. Yes. The remainder of the suggestion. Second. Any more discussion? The measurements are not finalized. As said in Ian's memo, that the, the internal parking group wanted to bring forward to the city whether or not we should move this forward. And if the TPC does want to move it forward, then we can get people finalized. We do this as a recommendation and with, with the actual number of speed just by DPW, so we don't have to come back to this Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, any more discussion? One more question, sorry. That, <clears throat> that first spot, is that is that a problem that it's right sort of where Owaga ends, or do you not foresee that being sort of a tough section right there? I think we can field verify okay. once we determine if we're going to move this forward. Okay. Am I correct that Awaga is a one-way street off of Belmont? I think it's two-way, but that section of Belmont is one-way heading so. Right, so it's not like somebody is coming out and right. making a right hand turn. Right. That's right. If you're coming up the water, you can only make a left hand turn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, distance wise, right. that, that space would not appear to be a, a problem. Okay, of course, the EPW folks would know how about it. Could somebody clarify this motion for me, please? Strike the meter all suggested proposed spaces. In all of these um, for Belmont and just, okay. I mean it's really it's a it's a motion for the ordinance that's putting there's a positive recommendation for the ordinance that's put in front of, in front of us as written. But just with right now we're just discussing Belmont. Belmont. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I believe so. Okay. Um, 
All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any nays, <laughs> any abstentions? I abstain. All right, that was Belmont. Um, let's take a look at Arnold. like to provide an overview of Arnold. It's just a similar scenario to, to the others we've discussed. There's no current ordinance and we're making weird zones and striping. Yeah. Actually there's stripes there but they're not they're kind of faded. And it goes into a lot, it looks like, or what are those um, perpendicular cars? It does go into a lot, and there's another lot that's not in this image to the, uh, to the left. If you went down the road, you turn left into another lot. And those are Smith ones? Yeah. Well, I think part of the, the lot at the end of Arnold may be associated with the rental property, but I'm not sure. But was, that was built in Fort Hall. And the other lot was built as part of a library project. So there would be a spacious lot in Dickinson Lot. Once again, location wise, this is right by the Smith College campus. So <coughs> it's the same idea as Belmont Avenue and um, West Street. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? Pause the recommendation. Again, subject to TBW doing minor adjustments. So, say, to the exact. Second. Arnold Avenue. Second. 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 Uh, any more discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? I'd like to abstain. Okay. And now to the last one, Elm. So currently these spots are usually used by commuters, correct? Street? Yes. Uh, there's high usage by students and staff also. I mean, it's right um, almost smack in the middle of the campus. Mm -hmm. You line up both sides. So that's Holland Hill Hill Chapel, right? To the, on the right, that sort of circular driveway. I'm waving at this mill. I believe that's correct. Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, dropped out. Is there a motion to approve this? Second. 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 Uh, any more? Any discussion on this? Currently, there is no parking overnight from 12 to 6 a.m. Mm. in that stretch. If we uh, approve of meter parking spaces. Do we want to keep that ordinance that no parking overnight, or so it's two different ordinances in the same area? So this one does. I would only say no. I, mean, I think that that's the area where understanding of residential needs. I want to allow parking overnight. Yeah, yeah, how about that? There are houses on Elm Street where people park on the street overnight? Uh, just beyond, just to the left, just west of this, there are, this area right here is all Smith. And then it quickly gets right central on the north side. Uh, the nature of the houses, though, they don't have 
parking garages or driveways or parking areas? They do. There's some rentals that probably don't have enough parking for all the tenants. They all, I think, all have some old street parking. One of the things that I would be um, leery of allowing overnight parking to, in that section is the same reason why we don't allow overnight parking on Bedford Terrace, even though there are meters there, is because then student population can buy a monthly permit that will allow them to park at long-term meters, which these would be, um, and then park your car there at night and stay there. So it doesn't allow for that changeover of cars so that people can park there. The cars will become warehouses. How much is the permit again? It's 45 a month. And these would be long-term meters? The proposal is for long-term long meters? What is long term? Ten hours. Ten hours. Well. Were all of these long term that we've discussed? Or no? Just these? Mm, Western was two, if I remember right. And Belmont and Arnold. Can bring up the. For the meters that are on West Street, it's two hours. Right, so that would continue the two hours, or is it, can, if you could bring it up, I don't know if that was made. 109. Hours. Uh, 109, is the minutes? 109, on Street. Got it. So Arnold is 10 hours, Belmont 10 hours. Yeah, they're all 10 hours. The difference with with Belmont, as far as like having the ten hours, is that you don't have the huge concentration of students in that area as you do in the upper part of Elm Street and towards Lawrence. That section because of the quad right. being right there with some of the biggest houses on the campus. Although um, right across, I mean, on Green Street, it has multiple houses on it. Right, but the population I don't think is anywhere near. But yes. So we have a motion on the floor, and so the is would somebody like to in this so it um, delineates the overnight parking. Are we keeping it or not? As the motion stands, it would keep the ordinance that is currently in effect that blocks overnight parking. And do we what are the, do we want to vote on that particular do we want to keep it that way? I think it makes sense to put that overnight parking uh, because we're trying to keep the spots turning over. That's how they're used now. The way they're used now is people coming in and out and turning over. We want the same people to use them and just want them to be in the spots. Okay. Any more discussion? So did I got I feel like I got lost here. Did we not want to continue any of these until Councilor Bidwell could weigh in on them? Well, I think we've kind of hopped onto this and we're setting them forward with... Okay, and he'll just weigh in. Yeah, it, well, and that uh, then the, uh, that we're, we're weighing in on the validity of these changes in, in our role as the, you know, the overseers of parking and transportation, and then it becomes council's job to then do the outreach, which I think I'd be super supportive of. Us doing. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any noes? Any abstentions? Okay.
This is. I also want to, to add that uh, Councillor LaBarge, whose ward this is in, um, has uh, weighed in affirmatively saying that she supports this change. So um, we're, we're reconstructing Glendale Road, and as part of that, we're trying to clean up some vestiges of the active landfill. So there was a problem back in, I don't know, 2000 when the landfill was um, active with trucks parking outside the gates and lining the street and idling there, which is why this ordinance was put into place to prevent trucks from idling. So at this point, the landfill is no longer active and um, the no parking ordinance is no longer necessary. Our proposal is that it reverts to no ordinance. Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion. We accept this uh, recommendation. Second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any no's or abstentions? Okay, that passes. Um, so that is it for today. Um, it's 525. Done worse. And um, that um, if people, you know, it, over the summer, um, we, I, I, I try to schedule the, the TPC only if needed. Um, so if people um, want to think about anything that's absolutely necessary to get done this summer, um, in either July or August, please reach out to me and, um, uh, and we will see if we need to schedule a meeting. So, um, so let me know. Uh, motion to adjourn. To adjourn. Blaney, it's no, no, it's, it's at this point, <coughs> should I be saving 16th on the schedule or we could cancel? I, I'm going to see what people say, you know, and um, and check in with the mayor's office to see if anything else might be coming forward. Okay. Um, so, somebody made a motion. I did. I'm to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody.